Matt Reif, the controversial comedian, has been making waves recently for his Netflix special as well as his striking facial structure. After appearing on his own comedy special, people started speculating that his striking face was due to plastic surgery. In this video, you'll find out, is Matt Reif natural or not? Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. For those of you who haven't been here before, hi, I'm Lori Hill. And on this channel, we talk about plastic surgery, cosmetic procedures, beauty and beauty standards. So if that sounds good to you, then make sure to subscribe. I have a lot of these short, interesting celebrity videos in December, so definitely don't miss out and subscribe. Matt Reif was born in Columbus, Ohio to his mother, April, and his father, Michael. He has three stepsisters and one younger half-sister. Let's talk about Matt's natural beauty traits. Please note that the photos in this video are not the only photos I use to analyze. I generally go through at least 50 to 100 photos if they're available of the celebrity, sometimes more than 100. He has great, strong, prominent bone structure, in particular to his jaw and his cheeks. He also has great skin quality. Here is Matt when he first seemed to come onto the scene. We see a man who still looks very young for his age, and this is important later on. Now take notice of Matt's teeth that seem to be small and widely spaced. Next, we'll look at Matt from age 19 to age 21 or 22. This is where we see the bulk of his facial changes, especially his jaw. Look at year 2015 to 2016 and notice that this is where his jaw really changed from short to taller and more prominent. Also notice that Matt had his teeth veneered or crowned in this time frame. Next, notice that from August 2016 to October 2016, his jaw continued to fill out, looking even more large and prominent as his face and jaw acclimated to the new chewing surfaces. Notice his masseters, they began to get larger or hypertrophy as they are used more frequently because now his lower teeth are meeting or hitting his upper teeth. As before they were crowned, they did not meet. Notice that there is a variation in head positioning and this can also cause a difference in the way the jaw looks from the front point of view. The new chewing forces are likely what have created the more prominent jawline. This is the same mechanism of action as chewing harder things will produce more bone development. And at Matt's age of 19 through 21, this is very likely still happening. Next, we see Matt here at 22, where he really developed facially to what he looks like as a young adult. We see a strong jaw and strong and high cheekbones. Now let's look at Matt here today at age 28. We see a strong jaw and strong cheekbones. Now if we contrast these two photos, age 22 with age 28, we see that the jaw is the same shape and fullness and prominence today as it was back then. Now take a look at the jaw angles. You may notice that there appears to be just a bit more bulk to the corners of the jaw angles today at age 28. This is likely due to hypertrophy of the masseter muscles. The masseters are right here on the jaw. Now, I used to be a dental hygienist, and as you all might know, my family is a dental family, and we do see a lot of this masseter hypertrophy. It often looks just like this, and you can see different variations of this hypertrophy from extremely full to just having a bit more of prominence to the jaw angles. Now, something that may help this diminish for Matt is using Botox to the masseters. Now, these are not jaw implants, and let me go over my reasons for it not being jaw implants. The first reason is because there's no new structure to the jaw. This is the same jaw that Matt had at age 22. If you look at the relative size and shape of his jaw, even back then, it's all there. It's just not quite as developed as it becomes later on. 
The second reason that I don't think this is jaw implants is that jaw implants would have a drop down feature right by the ear where they lengthen and make the total size of the lower third of the face longer and taller. And that overall tallness or length to the lower third makes the face look more balanced. And that overall height and length added by jaw implants will make the lower third look longer. And in Matt's case, his lower third has not been lengthened. In fact, his lower third is still on the short side. Now, if he were to have had jaw implants, I would think that's the first place that the surgeon and him would focus on for a more balanced lower third. Let's talk about Matt's cheeks. Let's look at this before and after. Now, he's always had prominent cheekbone structure, something that frequently develops right alongside with the jawbone in proper facial development. And as you can see here, we see both the cheekbone structure was prominent when he was younger, as well as the under eye support. It's always been there naturally, though maybe not as prominent as it is today. Now I do notice a little more volume to Matt's cheeks, but it's really not enough for me to absolutely say that he's had some type of dermal filler. Now, as far as the claims that he has had cheekbone implants, the place that he's full in is not a place where they can put facial implants. This is important to know. If you see somebody that's full right in this area right here, it is never due to added facial implants as you would be blocking the nerves in this area. So yeah, these are not cheek implants. In fact, when we look back at younger photos, he has always had cheek prominence in this area. Now, as far as that bit of extra volume to his cheeks, this could also be just normal filling out and development. Now, could he have had some kind of dermal filler over his cheeks and over his jaw to make them even more prominent. And that's what's responsible for this bit of bulk to both his cheeks and his jaw. Sure, he could have, though I do doubt it. Cheek filler would look actually pretty feminine and I don't think that's the direction that he's going for. And as far as that extra bit of jaw development, it can also be due to steroid use. I don't know if he uses steroids, but steroid use can cause that slightly overdeveloped look. Again, if it were jaw implants, he wouldn't have the same size and structure to his jaw. Lastly, let's look back at Matt's teeth. In this photo, you can see that Matt's original teeth were quite small and short. In the after photo, his teeth have been covered with either veneers or crowns, and he has chosen to only have six done, leaving the remaining teeth natural. This is generally not the best aesthetic choice as it gives an awkward look of having a step down from the crown teeth to the natural teeth. The crown teeth produce a shelf-like appearance. These crowns or veneers have caused Matt to open his mouth larger, even at rest, opening up his bite. Another thing that having the teeth longer and larger does is it causes you to eat and orient your teeth differently as now you are biting on a different, larger and longer surface. This can cause periodontal bone changes to the upper and lower jaw. Another reason that Matt's jaw looks different in the years following getting his new teeth. If you look at the year his jaw really changed in mass, it was in the year that he got the veneers or crowns to his teeth. So how much does it cost to look like Matt Reif? Six veneers, $24,000. Possible dermal filler to the cheeks and jaw, 5,000. Or just the cheeks, 2,500. Total cost, $29,000. Or $24,000 if you don't think that he had filler to his cheeks and jaw. Now, while it's really important to have more recognition of plastic surgery and cosmetic procedures in our society, and it's so good that more people and more celebrities are being 
more transparent about the procedures they've had. It's really important to be able to see what's not plastic surgery. With just some simple research going back a few years, you can easily see that Matt has always had this structure. Now, I don't mind people entering this plastic surgery space. What I do mind is people entering it and claiming things when they really either don't have the knowledge or haven't done the research. It's so important to do the research. This research itself took me five, six hours. I believe that's so critical because claiming someone had a bunch of procedures when researching back a few years will tell you otherwise is really kind of unacceptable. And I don't have any kind of alliance or bias towards this celebrity. I didn't even know of him prior to you guys asking for an analysis of him. So that's also important to keep in mind. Now, a lot of you take my word for things and really don't question me. And while I appreciate that, it's also important to understand where my knowledge base comes from. And when I was pursuing acting in LA, in my 20s, I actually was fortunate enough to meet lots of plastic surgeons, some of the ones that work on celebrities, ones that we see today. They welcomed me into their offices to look at before and after photos of actual facial implants. So being able to recognize facial implants comes very second nature to me. There are so many doctors and estheticians and injectors who really don't understand what facial implants look like and what a true before and after example of jaw surgery looks like. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please go watch my new Kim Kardashian video coming up next after this one. Thank you guys and I'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>